Even without the other electronic systems put in place, it would be almost impossible to lose petroleum products at the depots. A number of players with different roles and interests are present every time to police the product at every point and without the GRA opening the valves, no depot or OMC can load petroleum products. The product is owned by the BDC. So the BDC must be in the known, the customs must be in the known because we have access to. And for most of even the depots, the access to the depots are controlled by us, as in the gates, because it's a bonded warehouse. Okay. And then we have national security at the depots. We have MPA reps at the depots. So by the time you are done, seeing everybody, that exercise is not even lucrative anymore. Uh -huh. And the depot has a reputation to protect. Because if day in, day out, people get to know that products get missing at your place, they are in for business. People will not come and store their products there. Uh -huh. So even when there are no systems, it is virtually impossible. And we haven't had any such case, I mean, ever since. It is also important to note that Although the GRA has contracted SML, the readings from the SML meters are not used by the GRA for its tax purposes. It has been the way bill figure, which is meters, uh, the volume that has been dispensed from the meters. That is the volume we use for tax purposes. The switch meters. That is the gantry meters. Yes. SML has confirmed to the fourth estate that the meters are the loading gantries of the depots, which are calibrated by the Ghana Standards Authority every six months, take more accurate readings than the meters of SML. These are the readings that are used for tax and revenue purposes and not the readings by the SML meters. From the engineering perspective, if you have contact meters mm. and non-contact meters, mm. which of these two it's likely to give you a more accurate reading. Okay, so the contact meters are always the best. We also know that the depots, they have the contact meters. Yes. If I alluded to the fact that the contact meters are the best. Are the best. So, if the FML meters are less accurate and their readings are not the ones used for tax purposes by the GRA, can SML claim credit for the revenue increment in the sector? If you look at what NPA is doing, uh, doing tank gauging and also metering, it is even much more sophisticated than what SML is doing. On top of that, they also have tank tracking. They're able to track the volumes on every tank from the depot to the filling station. If all of that is not addressing uh, the leakages that we do have, just having electronic seals at the depot wouldn't be a more effective way uh, to ensure that revenue is actually generated from uh, uh, the downstream sector. The fourth estate also confronted the managing director of SML with the figures the company churned out as savings it made because of its operations. First was the claim in April 2021 that SML saved the state 1 billion Ghana cities due to its operations. If you, if you use the 2019 as a base, yes, yeah? yes. So try the this one. You get one billion for 2020. It's 800 million. Okay, yes. about, eight, about 800 million. Okay. Yes. The company started operations in 2020. From the revenue figures we obtained from the GRE, the difference in the total revenue from the downstream petroleum sector. Between 2019 and 2020, it's 800 million cities. If all the increment was attributed to the work of the company, it will still fall short of the 1 billion cities it claimed to have saved. In February 2023, SML Ghana Limited again claimed that it had saved 3 billion cities due to its operations. The company has admitted the services it listed on its website as curtailing irregularities in the sector did not exist and deleted them from the website. Even if SML was carrying out those services and all the incremental revenue within the period of its operations 
was credited to the company's efforts, the amount would be 2.4 billion cities and not 3 billion cities as it claimed to have saved. When we put these figures to the managing director, he made a shocking admission. That's why, that's why that's 3 billion, uh, uh, I'm not. That's why I told you from the beginning. I said I don't know about this 3 billion. We cannot say your intervention saved 3 billion. That's, no, I said 3 billion. I'm not, if I, I've told you that I'm not aware. Because when we were told about the publication, we even called the as we speak this morning, still on your website. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, in fact, to be honest, me, I don't even know uh, website matter. Despite evidence that SML Ghana lied about the services it renders to the state and the amount of money it claimed to have saved, the finance minister, Ken Ofriata, this year decided that the company's contract should be expanded to cover the gold mining sector and the upstream petroleum production sector in Ghana. A contract cited by the fourth estate shows that SML Ghana is entitled to $0.75 per barrel of oil produced in Ghana. Ghana currently produces between 160,000 and 170,000 barrels of oil per day. The country is expected to add an additional 80,000 barrels per day from the Pekan oil fields, which is expected to be developed a little over a year from now. The company is also entitled to 0.75% of the total volume of gold produced in the country. Ghana last year produced 3.7 million ounces of gold. What this means is that per a current arrangement, SML Ghana is entitled or will be paid over a hundred million US dollars every year. This contract is for 10 years. The Ministry of Finance, the GRA, are yet to respond to our right to information request on these contracts. The regulator of the upstream sector, the Petroleum Commission has however said it knows nothing about this contract. The Petroleum Commission also says it has no report on leakages or loss of revenue in the upstream sector the reason this company is employed or contracted to monitor recently um talo you know uh, um, installed new metering systems that were calibrated by the uh, standards authority is finance ministry saying that those metering systems went wrong or is that the feedback they got from the standards authority that the meters that are already in place have problems. That requires that we bring in SML to now be the one that can accurately uh, uh, monitor petroleum production. When asked what his advice to the Commissioner General of the GRA on the SML contracts would be if he was still the technical advisor, Mr. Soti said he could not answer. That is not a question for me to answer. I'm not. How do you charge for your services? Is it? Bill based on the quantity you check or the revenue made? Um, that is handled by another uh, department. If I am only handling the operations, as to how charges and so on, I'm not privy to that one. So you don't know how much GRA pays you for your no, services? No, 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 I have no idea. I have no idea. SML Ghana is not the first third party revenue assurance service provider whose operation has raised questions. In the telecommunications sector, the services of Suba Info Solutions and now Kelne GVG have raised concerns in the past for similar reasons as SML Ghana. Currently, the operations of Safari Tech Ghana have been flagged and the controversy is still raging. SML Ghana has not been able to flag any anomaly or underreporting, diversion or dilution of petroleum products, but it is being credited for the gains made in curtailing losses in the sector. It appears these companies are brought in in the name of revenue assurance to take credit for the work of GRA officials and take from the taxes collected after adding very little or nothing by way of revenue. Evans is Yamon Mensah, 
Ajua Adubia Owusu and Manase Azure Awuni's report for the fourth estate.